Welcome to a short tutorial on requirements management plan from adaptive processes. Requirements management plan is a very critical document for any business analyst or requirements in analyst. This plan helps us to have our thoughts and ideas clear about how requirements management is going to happen in the entire project. Many often this pieces may be integrated with your project plan, which is also fine. But please make sure that all these elements have been well thought out and available to you. Uh, we start with uh, a cover page, which is a standard in all the documentation that we use. So that tells you for which project this has been created, what is the version, how the versions have changed, and what are the references for this particular document. In this case, uh, the main ICB proposal, uh, which is for this project has been created. Uh, that is the main reference for this document. Then we have index and the index actually helps you to take you to different modules. So for example, if I want to go to infrastructure information, so I just click on infrastructure and I go to infrastructure page and again, I can come back to the index. So if you see the index, we have about 30 elements that we have discussed here. And to many people, it may look little daunting because 30 elements are not easy to think through. But the good part is most of it can actually be followed from the organizational norm if your project is pretty similar to what you have done in the past. So for example, if I look at it, there are at least 15 elements which can be simply used from your organizational method or structure. In case your project is different, that uh, you may like to modify a little bit of it. Otherwise, most of it should be very standard for you. For example, requirement structure. You don't have to change your requirement structure for a particular project unless it is really needed. Otherwise, you can simply go ahead and use the requirement structure that is available to you. Okay, so let me explain uh, each of these tabs uh, in a very uh, succinct way because there are 30 tabs to be explained. Uh, the first tab that we start with is overview, uh, which gives you a little bit about why this document has been created, what is the purpose, and uh, who is the intended audience for this document. Then we have a tab called Terms and Glossary, where if you have used any term in the document, you have explained it. So for example, ICV stands for in-country value. It's a concept which is prevalent in middle, many Middle Eastern and African countries. Um, so similarly, if you have used any other acronym, which is not very common, it's good to put it here. Then we come to something called competencies needed. So here what we do is we have different roles being played in the requirements management activity. So we have a lead BA role and we have a requirements analyst role and we have put what is the skill type, skill description and skill level expected for this particular role. Then we come to infrastructure, which is basically how where do you store your requirements? How do you manage them? So if you see here, we have used three products. Uh, one is GRC Perfect, where we store our requirements. Then we have Bizazi BPM, uh, which is to draw models. Uh, we could also use Star UML in case if you are interested in drawing detailed modeling elements for state chart and others. Mm, then we of course use Microsoft Office to document some of our requirements. Then we come to communication plan, which is basically saying how often do you communicate this being a short project for about six months. So we had a plan to communicate weekly on the requirements engineering progress. Then we come to requirement structure. So you have a document like vision, which gives you what the project is about. Then you have stakeholder requirements or stakeholder requests. Then you have BRD, then you have SRS and then you have requirements management plan. Then we have a guideline for BRD and SRS traceability. Where do we do traceability? Then we have put a prioritization guidelines, uh, which is drawn using Bizazi BPM and you can modify this as well. So here we check if something is a legal requirement, then we automatically put it as high priority. If it is an NFR, again, we put it as a high priority or if other requirements are dependent, we again put it as high priority and if the requirement also offers a very high business value we put it into high priority otherwise rest all go to low priority 
then we have also provided a very simple guideline for um, using the right techniques uh, and in what order. So many often people are really confused because there are quite a many number of techniques which are available and which techniques would be used when. So for example, the first question we ask is there some documentation available? If it is available, obviously you can use document analysis as a good feature. Similarly, are you looking at high level requirements or detailed requirements? Is it an NFR? Or are you looking for NFRs? Are these requirements explicit? Do you have a need for consensus? Do you have a large number of stakeholders? So based on all this, you can find it suggesting different techniques which you can use. And of course, it's a repetitive process. Then we come to change management guidelines, which is basically saying how the changes in the project will be handled. So we had a simple concept of a change control board, which consisted of your sponsor, project manager, business analysts, uh, and domain SME. And they would decide which changes are to be incorporated and when. Now we had just seen our change, man, change management guidelines. Then we come to change control board where we describe what kind of changes need review and approval from whom. So for example, if you're here, if you see NFRs are being approved by sponsor, FRs below certain effort are being approved by the PM and below that, above that it goes to the sponsor. Then we also provide a little bit details about a config management plan. So where you tell what are the configuration items that you are going to create and how do you plan to name them? Uh, intelligent naming is always helpful because with that intelligent name, it's uh, always easy to find the document and who would be the owner for that particular deliverable and where do you plan to store them and who has access to them in what? So for example, the work area, everybody has access for read and write, but when it comes to review, the access is for the team is only read and upload, whereas the lead BA can modify and domain SME can modify. Then we come to metrics uh, where we define the different metrics that we plan to use as understanding whether we are doing well as an RE process or not. So I have defined certain metrics which we felt would be valuable for the project. Then we come to the attribute section where we define different attributes that we plan to use in our requirements management process. So for example, we have an attribute called priority, we have an attribute called status, we have a priority attribute called planned iteration, difficulty level, all these are part of our um, uh, requirements attributes. So, so far, whatever we have discussed, uh, this is typically um, something which you can easily borrow it from your organizational um, aspect and then from here on we actually go to the project context. So here we defined about the project or system context. So who are our stakeholders, what are our interfacing systems, what are the documentation that we should look at, all that. And then we also mention the exact sources and elicitation techniques that we would use to collect requirements from different sources. So for example, NFRs will typically collect it from sponsor, process and data UI requirements we will collect it from ICB specialists and contractors, interfacing requirements we will get it from their respective owners and what technique we plan to use and which modeling technique we would like to use to capture those requirements. So it's a very good mapping between starting with your requirements, its source, its elicitation technique and modeling technique. Then we have stakeholder matrix where we provide all the stakeholder details and their key expectations, expected contribution, current contribution, all those aspects in the stakeholder matrix. Then from stakeholder matrix, we come to Racky matrix where we say what are the deliverables and who is responsible, accountable, consulted and informed. Uh, then we come to risks and assumptions. So where we put the different risks that we see for requirements management. So I have put around four risks for this particular project. Then we come to effort estimate where we say what kind of effort is needed for this project. So we have something like initial understanding, scope finalization, use cases to be developed, detailed SRS documents to be developed and support during development. And I have put an on average how much time do we take 
how many number of hours we need for that and total effort turns out to be 488 hours. Then we come to RE organization which is basically the people who are working as uh, the requirements analysts or business analysts it's provided here. Then we have done a skill gap analysis for each person saying whether um, some skill training is needed. So for example for Fatima uh, we expect her to go through some UML training because she's expected to do modeling for this particular project. Then we come up with our activity plan which is where you start putting your meetings and uh, development plans and then your review activity with respect to requirements management. Then there is a checklist for requirements management plan itself which is provided here. Then there is a peer review form which indicates uh, when was it formally reviewed and who all approved it. I have put a template for conflict management because as you start working in your project obviously you will have conflicts and to formally record the conflicts for future reference. And then we also have a problem tracker which is uh, mainly on the requirement side if there are any issues which has been recorded those have been recorded and resolved. And finally we have requirements traceability matrix uh, which also is called coverage matrix where we put all the uh, starting from high level requirements to detailed requirements to design reference to implementation reference. This is how a good requirements management plan can be made. Uh, it may look little exhaustive but having a good thought about it in a critical project will help you to avoid a lot of future issues. Uh, if you like this template you can uh, buy this template on our website. So please visit our website www adaptive adaptive processes processes.com -E and uh, uh, it is available for a very nominal price. Thank you for going through this video tutorial and hope we uh, get another opportunity to interact with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.